All right, Shalom, Shalom. First things first, I want to give honor and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Ladash. And we say, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Ladash. And we give double honors to our apostle elders, which are the apostle elders, a great millstone, which feed us with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. When the time of the end, 2023, 2022, going into 23, uh, we uh, almost done with this year. And it's uh, definitely been the year of Yabashim Yahusha turning up. Uh, that title has definitely come to pass. Um, we've seen things that we've never witnessed on um, uh, in a long time or if ever. All right. The, through the pandemic, through um, these the current war situation, prophecies are popping, man. Um, so I'm going to play this video and then we're going to jump right into the lesson. Lord willing to set a fine lesson and that is strengthening your spirit and and see that the, the Bible's on point, man. The Bible never misses because the Most High never misses, man. All right. And it says we're going to give him glory because he told us of these things before it came to pass. That's how we know that our power runs everything, man. All right. So let's go into this lesson. This lesson is going to be titled, By thy sword thou shalt live. Okay. By thy sword thou shalt live. And we're going to jump right into it. All right. Shalom. While the blood of thousands of people has been spilled on the battlefield, the honchos of the weapons manufacturing companies have been laughing their way to the bank. This is the irony that not many in media seem to be reporting on. This is the business of war which lines the pockets of companies and their CEOs who rake in billions of dollars by manufacturing weapons that are designed to kill effectively and devastate as large an area as possible to snuff out lives. I'll give you a recent example. As soon as the Russian President Vladimir Putin, in his address to the nation, announced a mobilization of 300,000 reservists, weapons manufacturers were cheering and clapping. Consider this. On the 21st of September, when Russian President Vladimir Putin made his address to the nation, the shares of Britain's biggest defense manufacturer, Bay Systems, shot up by 4.7% in the immediate aftermath of this escalation. The stocks of the Chemerin Group went up by about 2.1%, while Thales, the French defense manufacturer, saw its stock prices go up by over 5% in the immediate aftermath. So what, you, what, what he's breaking down is that when this wartime, when these announcements and different things, because news and certain things affect the stock market, all right? So if they say that there's going to be a, a shortage of grain, guess what? They're going to invest or they're going to... Um, they're going to uh, pull their stocks out of certain companies if, you know, they know that that's going to fall because you have to watch that. That's why a lot of these um, these number watchers and these stock brokers, they watch new situations and they watch because that's going to trend and that's going to result into what the movements of economies and different things. So this is what you see as the prices or the stocks have went up on these defense companies and these these weapon manufacturers because war war it's, it's a profitable business just like it says every war has been a what a banker war man okay so they're making money off of death okay and this is this is what you break down because these numbers equaled death man because the more weapons that are sold guess what the more people that are put to death the more carnage that is caused and these weapons are designed to kill effectively all right effectively killing weapons like if they're used guess what somebody gonna lose their life man okay so let's go ahead and keep playing this the announcement. On the American defense manufacturing front, the shares of Lockheed Martin, Raytheon Technologies, and Northrop Grumman also popped and scaled new highs. And the, these, those companies, and these companies are owned by Amalek, man. A lot of these companies are, are, are monopolized by Am, uh, Amalek, man. All right? And you should know who Amalek is by now, but that's, that's who's running and, and going and making money and profiting billions, not just hundreds of thousands billions of dollars because that's the death that's why it says we're, the world has to be pushed into us because guess what the ones that are ruling they make money off of death so it's in their best interest to keep the world in what in carnage and and have those um different uh, skirmishes going on because guess what they they make money they live off that and that's why this te this left this lesson is titled by thy sword thou shalt live and we're gonna go into that let's finish playing this for the defense companies, this is boom time. Business and profits have perhaps never been this good. 
See, have never been this good. Prophets, remember him saying that prophets have never been this good. What these merchants of debt never think about is the suffering and the faces of those who get crushed under their manufactured weapons and explosives. All right, let's jump right into the lesson. Let's jump right into the blue letter. All right. Let's jump right into the blue letter. Because the one thing that to show, because you have uh, no class Malone saying the Edomites are done away with. And um, because guess what? He's taken away from the scriptures. And, and we already know what the, the Rev book of Revelation says. If you add or take away from this, the most High is going to deal with you. So where you got to prove that the Edomites are done away with. But we can prove I can prove right now by this very verse that in the, in the news clip I just sent you that Esau is still here. And that he's 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 living out the prophecy. OK, so there's no way that the Edomites are done away with because they're they're still prophecy still needs to be done with them. They're a part of prophecy. They came out of the womb of uh, they came out of the same womb with Jacob man. the Edomites came out of the same womb with Jacob. Jacob and Esau are, bl are blood brothers, man. All right. They're not identical. They're paternal twins. OK, this is the book of Genesis 27. In verse 40. Now listen close. I've always read this, but I jumped into spirit. Having just jump into this word and this this stuck out to the pay. I watched that news clip and then I, you know, the spirit had me dive into this um, chapter. All right. This is the book of Genesis 27 and verse 40. And it reads and it says. And let's go to four, let's go to 39 so we can set the tone. This is Isaiah 27 and verse 39. And Isaac. His father answered and said unto him. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. OK, and by thy sword, thou shalt live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, when thou shalt have the dominion and Esau has the dominion. So the Edomites were promised dominion, just like Jacob is promised dominion. So Esau would have to be living his dominion because guess what? Jacob is the beginning of the world to come. So Esau is the end of this world because he's been giving dominion over the world. Job 9 and 24 tells you that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And who gave it to him? Who gave the wicked the earth? Isaac, which is Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it, because he is Adam. So he has the dominion which was given to him in the Garden of Eden. Which it says that he has what? Dominion over the creek. That's why Adam, or if you want to say um, Adam, but we know it's the Adamites, named the beast and named and have the dominion and lived in the Garden of Eden. It says that there was a garden eastward in Eden, okay, which is the land of Israel today, which you call Palestine. All right. So who gave the world, who gave, who gave the wicked the world? Isaac, right here. You're seeing when this world was given, when Job 9 and 24 was was promised. Job 9 and 24 says the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And how was that given? It was given by Isaac, man, which was promised through the blessings. So the earth is going through the man, the um, showing you that a uh, Adam has control over the blessings of the earth. What does it say in second Ezra? It says the earth was created for our sakes. Who sakes? Adamites, Israelites. OK, let's read it again. It says, and by thy sword, thou shalt live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou should break his yoke from off thy neck. Now, let's go into this word live. All right, let's go ahead and play it. Strong's age 2421. Chaya. 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 And it says what? Listen to this close. To live, have life, remain alive, sustain life. Live prosperously. See? Prosperously. So if we take that and let's go right here. Let's go right here. Look. Prosperously meaning having success, flourishing, and prospers new business, well to do. Well off, prosperous family. So now, knowing that with the understanding what we just read, what just what did he just say? 
What these merchants of death never think about is the suffering and the faces of those in time. Business and profits have perhaps never been this good. See? But what these merchants... Business and profits have never been so good. So this, these men that are over these companies, that are prospering, that are having their best year ever, if you look at them and find out who they are, what nation and what nationality of people that they are. Let's, man, we can go like, let's go like that. Let's do, let's do this. Oh, let's look, look. Images. Let's go. Let's let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's do this. CEOs of weapon companies. Let's go. Here, let's do this. Let's do top. Co top weapon companies in the world. General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Gurren, Boeing, right? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. To 22.3 billion. 22.3 billion. Let's see. 3 billion. Lockheed Martin, 3 billion. Let's see this. Let's do this. Let's do the post right there. Like it came up. Oh, who is this? Who is this? Look at that. This is the president of Lockheed Martin. Okay. Let's see here. So you see, man, we can go on and on. Let's do general dynamic. So look, it's coming up. It's like the, it's, the nose. Look at that. Edomite. These are, this, these are people making money off death. Let's, they have suits on and smiles, and but, but, but death. That's what comes out of their business is death. Killing things, man. Okay, let's keep going. Northrop Gurren, I ain't even heard of this place. Look, CEO Northrop. Let's, 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 come on, man. Another Edomite woman. Come on, man. We, we ain't seeing, they don't even put Jake in there, man. So that's showing you. Now let's read it again. Now let's read it with understanding. Prosperous, live forever, buy, be quickened, be alive, be restored to life or health. So he's his sword, he shall live, his his sword shall nourish him. And and is it not? We just showed you that the top weapon companies in the world are, are owned, lock, stock, and barrel by a nationality of people. They have monopolized. This is not me trying to, I'm I'm just looking, all I'm doing is typing in things. And being subjective, if you understand that. I'm just pulling out facts. All right? Of course, I'm biased because this is, these these people, I, I, you, you got to think, deaf. And we've been at the tip and the end of these of these weapons, man. That's why the Lord has preserved, he, he preserved us, man. If it wasn't for the Yabba Shemi Shah's mercy, this man could do away with us, man. But he can't do away with us. He don't know where all of us are. Uh, some of us have been camouflaged among his people, man. 
So he'd have to take out his, he, he don't know, man. He'd have to blood test everybody and, and line up everybody and then do them away. But they, they wouldn't be able to do that. The world wouldn't go with it, man. All right? So the, the spirit, all right, Isaac told his, his son Esau that he would live, he would prosper by his sword. And what nationality of people in these last days? One company profited $22.3 billion. They, it's in their best interest for war to continue. War will never stop on this earth. It will never stop on this earth. We will destroy. That's why it says for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened or there shall be no flesh that should be remaining, man. I'm paraphrasing it. So the Lord is coming to save this earth. There's no, there's no oh, oh, coming destruction. It was coming salvation, man. Yahweh, what Yahweh Shai is getting ready to do, what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is getting ready to do is salvation. Save the earth from literally destruction. We should welcome this, this coming as, 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 a, as a salvation for everything, man. Even Esau. Esau going into, into slavery is for his benefit, man. Just like when the Lord put him in the, in the, in the mountains and had him, had him uh, in the caves, man. He was eating juniper roots. He was eating a nice pH balanced diet. <laughs> the apostle brought that out. Apostle Elder Tahar brought that out about the juniper roots and the and the uh, pH balance. So Esau was eating good, man. He was eating he was eating them good herbs, man. He was being preserved. That was probably his best diet ever. All right, but the time we had now, we're waiting on Yahusha to save the planet Earth. There's no this shouldn't there should be no negative even in your mind about this destruction. I hope hey I hope we make it. I hope I make it. Abarathazah, man, but the Lord coming to save the earth is is beautiful. When the missiles, them, them missiles start flying, and the destruction comes, that's a good thing. That's a good thing because guess what? You the foolishness of the Most High is wiser than men. You would be like, damn, the Lord is destroying. I know He's saving the earth, man. Because look how much extinction life is going on. Uh, uh, flowers that are being extinct, animals that are being extinct, trees that are being extinct, insects that are being extinct, birds that are being extinct. Let's, let's, you know what? Let's, proof is in the pudding. Check this out. Extinct. Shit. Yo, 99% of the earth species are extinct, but that's not the worst of it. Shit, man. Shit, man. <laughs> Yo, I didn't know this. I didn't this. I didn't know this. Let's read it. There's been vast diversity of life that has extinct uh, existed and now extinct. If you were on the, it says, if you were on the list, it says, it's like, if you were to list out every species that has ever extinct, it existed on earth from the tiniest mold spores to the largest mammal, a biologist estimate that somewhere around 99% of those species would currently be extinct. Damn. How would we, how, how do we know? Uh, paint, uh, pen, uh paleontologist are routinely finding fossils of new species that have never been discovered. Now, uh, not to mention the living species were dis were discovered or was discovering every year. So if we don't know every species that has ever existed, how how can scientists has uh, say how many are extinct? It's a numbers game. Scientific no scientists know that plants and animals only fossilize under special conditions usually in sediment rocks and almost exclusively if the species has hard features like bone, shell, or teeth. They also know uh, that a lot of fossils have been lost in tectonic activity and many more are still just impossible to access. By combination of knowledge of these limits, how much rock is out there and how many species were already discovered, they can intelligently say that our list is not, uh, our list is, of known species is only um, many. Uh, what is that? A fraction of those that actually live. See, so you seeing 
a lot of the extinction on the earth, man. Everything's dying, man. Everything is dying around us, man. So the Lord has to come. He has to come and do things, man. He has to come and do things. Okay. There's, I heard, uh, plants and flowers. Look, I'm going to show you. Look. Look at this. These are flowers that are extinct now, man. Look. Let's visit. Let's visit it. Flowers that we'll never see again. We'll say the lilies and the Lord deals with flowers, man, and ve and ve and vegetation. That's why he said uh, uh, said Solomon was not arrayed as one of these lilies, and the Lord has a favorite flower too, man, the lily. So don't think that the Lord is not even the flowers are important to Yahweh Shem Yahshua, man. Look, this flower is extinct. You won't. You can't find it no more, man. Look. Endangered flowers that will leave the world a little less. Um, let's go. Salakia. Let's go back to this one. Salakia. Okay. Let's visit this. Golly, the Lord is bad. The Lord is off the chain. Look at these flowers. Golly. Let's read it. Endangered flowers that will leave the world a little less beautiful. Man, come on, man. The Lord's got to come. He's got to come. It says, I know you've heard of endangered animal list, but did you know that there's a list of endangered flowers too? Flowers throughout the world become endangered for a variety of reasons. Habitat destruction, such as flooding, lodging, and building, and putting flowers at risk of extinction. Climate change, which we know is BS. That bring the flooding of extreme changes in temperatures can also affect the flower population. Plus, the types of flower become very popular uh, with the public and over and over roost. These 11 flowers are amongst those that might not be around much longer. Look. Look, look at these flowers. Man, the Lord is off the chain, man. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Wow. Wow, you got to be a demon to destroy to to you got you destroying flowers, man. So when I say that the Lord is coming to salvation the earth, this is not we should welcome this like welcoming a, a, a water after drought, man. That's what the the, the missiles, all of this is going to be. Even the times we live in now, because these times are live are moving us towards the, the time of salvation, man. We shouldn't hesitate on this at all because guess what? If we don't hurry this up, ain't no ain't gonna be none of us left, man. None of us, including Esau himself, because he's a madman. He's a he's a he's a moving. He's a walking suicide victim. He's a walking suicide case, man. That's why he commits suicide now. He wants to do that to the earth, though. He wants to kill himself, just like he does. This is a mass shooter situation, but it's the earth. He wants to mass kill the earth and then knock himself off, man. That's what we're doing, because that's what he's doing. That's what he, he does on a small scale. He'll go into a place and do a mass shooting and, and could end, and end himself. But this is the situation he wants to do, man. All right. So live. So that's what it says. And it says to have life, to continue in life. So he to live is to continue in life. So Esau shall continue in life by the sword. Re remain alive, sustain life, to live on or upon, to live on or upon. To live off of the sword. Lockheed Martin's weapon manufacturers are owned by Edomites, man. I, I don't even have to keep looking. I bet the CEO board is Edomites. The 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 um the damn mailroom people are Edomites. You know? This is the, the time we're living in. This is exactly to show you who Esau is. Because who else is living by the sword in these last days? Why, why are these people matching prophecy? Let's say that. If they're not Edomites and they're not the wicked... That the Bible speaks of. Why are they doing what the scriptures are saying? Let's uh, somebody something's missing here. If the Edomites are done away with, why is these people living by the sword, which was promised to Esau by his father Isaac? Come on, man. And who is his main target on certain things? It's Jakes, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Look at the Panama deception, man. Okay. So the mindset you should have now is get, man, lock in the spirit. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go through these precepts and I'm going to close on out. The point was made. 
Um, I just wanted to hit that point. Thou, uh, by thy sword, thou shalt live. Okay, live means prosper. All right, and Esau is doing that today, so we can clearly point out that he is the biblical Edomite man. This is Jeremiah 50 and verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder? What is a hammer? It's a weapon. We have a war hammer. War hammers were made to do what? They were made to injure you. They were made to hurt you. They were made to, and then they would come back and kill you later, incapacitate you. That's what war hammers did. It would break you up. Anywhere it hit, it would break up. It hit you on your arm, your arm broke. You hit you on your leg, your leg broke. Hit you in your body, you, you, something in your body hurt. You got to lay down. <laughs> That's what war hammers were built for. Okay? How was the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? And then I show you them, them weapon manufacturers are all over the planet Earth in different fa forms of fashion, but they're eating my own companies. That are moving towards the same goal, war, fund both sides, give the, the, the opposition weapons and then give the, um, the, other, the other people weapons and you make money off the both of it. You don't care who wins. You already won. And then they're going to pay you to maintain that victory. So you, it's in your best interest. This is shit. Give the one you want to win better weapons. That's it. How was the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder? And broken. How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? So it's showing you that Babylon, Babylon, <laughs> Babylon is going to be the hammer of the whole earth. And who else has the military might as Babylon today? Which we known as this place over here, man. All right. Nobody. Nobody's messing with Babylon. Russia's close, but they're Edomites too. So look at that. Okay. I have laid a snare for the and thou art taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. So <laughs> Esau don't know he's in the trap. He don't know he's the Lord got him. He's in the trap. That's another sit down. The, the wicked is in the trap. Let me write that down. <laughs> the wicked is in the trap, man. He don't know he's there, though. He doesn't he doesn't realize he's in the trap. He thinks he's still a, a animal that's in a trap. Don't know they're in a the trap because guess what? They wouldn't go in there. They would not go in there, but the but the Lord, you have to put um, uh, uh, um, bait in that trap. What's the bait? Is the world, namely by taking us out, by taking us and 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 putting themselves at the top of the Richter scale, if you want to say. But that's the that's the bait. He's in there. The Lord has already sprung the trap. That's why the prophecies are going, man. That's why you see these prophecies that are going left and right, because the trap has been sprung. Esau's already, he lost, man. He went in there. He went in there and he, he made the wrong moves and he's in the trap. He cannot get out. The elites cannot get out. They know that this is it's over with, man. The chariots are showing themselves. The truth is out. Knowledge, wisdom and understanding. We're becoming a nation again. We're rebuilding ourselves to fulfill the Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. So it's done. It's over with. There's not there, the, we, all we waiting for is the coming of Yahweh Shai. That's it. There is no other moves to be made, man. Besides the end moves, which is you fighting the Lord and the Lord beating you, and and then establishing and delivering His elect, which none can. You can't stop that. You cannot stop the elect from being delivered in those chariots in front of the world, man. And it's going to be live stream and it's going to be publicized, man. And then and then the world is going to witness and know. Everything that we've been saying through the spirit and power of Yahbashim Yahshua is true and, and, and it's going to be solidified. It's going to be a new nation on the earth and there's going to be a new kingdom coming, man. And it's going to be ruled in utter righteousness under the ways of Yahbashim Yahshua under the law, statutes, and commandments, which will be placed into our inward parts. And we will be perfect in the, in the eyes of Yahbashim Yahshua for eternity, man. And we're going to flourish as a nation, as a nation that has never flourished in a way that we are going to flourish. All right, we're going to be gods on the planet Earth, man. We're going to make it flourish like the Garden of Eden again, man. And I can't, Lord willing, I can't wait, man. This life for the next, you know, is, and I'm ready for it, man. You know, you should be just feel the same, man. This world is not of us. This world is not meant for us. This is the world of the wicked. This was meant as a transition. This is a, this is a bus stop to the kingdom of heaven. This is a, a stopover, man. This is a layover. That's all it is. It's a, it's a layover to the kingdom of heaven. And then it's going, man, we're going to get down in it, man. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Lord willing, says that this was an edifying lesson. I hope you, you know, uh, learn anything and increase that faith 
and just uh, believe in his truth that much more, you know. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Lord willing, instead of find a lesson with that, I say, call Halom, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhak, Wadash. And I say, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhak, Wadash. Till the next time, I say, Shalom, and as always, keep faith. Shalom.